Hey, everyone. Uh, strange thing happened on the way to the stage. Now, this is true. I saw Carl, I saw Carl Malamud, uh, who uh, grabbed my speech, scanned it in, said something about sending it to outer space, and then gave it back to me. Someone will have to tell me what he's talking about. But thank God for Carl Malamud. And, uh, and thank you, Tim O'Reilly. You know, I remember probably about a year and a half ago at this point, sitting down with Tim and chatting, and, and, uh, and Tim in his way, many of you have experienced this, you know, said uh, in this conversation, uh, uh, so what about, what about government as a platform? What about data as a platform? Is that, you know, is there something there? And it was the first time I heard anyone really take a set of ideas that uh, a lot of people, a lot of us have been working on, and in a way that only Tim can do it, uh, uh, find a way to talk about it that's immediately understandable. And so I wasn't surprised a few months later when, uh, um, when Tim announced the first version of this last year, uh, uh, when he started talking uh, more and more about government as a platform. It's a great organizing concept. Uh, I'm pleased to be back here uh, this year. Uh, Last year, this community seized the first moments of the new Obama administration to urge government leaders to move swiftly into an era of bold innovation. Uh, we've certainly tried at the FCC to listen to that call, and it's been a busy year. At the FCC, we've established an approach to reforming the agency built on three pillars, communication, participation, and data. So communication, our team, our little SWAT team at the FCC comprised of some of the most talented people I've ever worked with, uh, has been among the group of pioneers working to reimagine the .gov experience and facilitate 21st century communication with Americans. For example, last year we launched broadband.gov in connection with the broadband plan that Tim mentioned to provide an online and interactive experience for citizens to get engaged in the development of the National Broadband Plan. The site included the first FCC blog, making it easy for anyone to be involved in the creation of the plan. Our agency is up and running on over a dozen social networking sites, uh, creating uh, quite a large online community. So far, over 650,000 people have connected and participated with the FCC online. That's up from uh, a little bit over zero at this time last year. On and offline, we've moved aggressively to promote an informed and engaged citizenship under the pillar of participation. In the last year, we've hosted over 60 public workshops to encourage open discussion, a first at the FCC, and we've had over 50,000 participants. The way we do these, we have a public workshop the senior staff at the FCC rolls up their sleeves uh, with people who are both in the room, but we stream these lives. We take questions and comments over the internet. We launched the first crowdsourcing platform at the FCC to increase the diversity of voices in Washington, and we've received over 45,000 comments through that. And one of the most compelling parts of our online engagement is that blog comments relating to any open proceeding are now officially part of the public record at the FCC. This is something that uh, I thank our legal team for working hard to make happen. As many of you know, the Administrative Procedures Act and other rules are not the uh, uh, most internet friendly um, uh, statutes. Um, but we found a way to do it. Uh, we said we have to do it. And uh, uh, right now at the FCC, you don't have to hire a lawyer if you want to submit comments to the agency and have them be formally and legally considered as part of our record. Data. We're also committed at the FCC to President Obama's vision of open data. We've launched an ambitious data innovation initiative that will go even beyond what was asked by the Open Government Directive. We launched an agency-wide data inventory. We created a new chief data officer at the FCC. 
and put data officers in every bureau and office at the agency. We're committed to unlocking our agency's data, I really should say the public's data that we collect at the FCC. We're committed to unlocking that in open, searchable, machine-readable formats, providing very broad access to raw FCC data. Last year, I stood on the stage and spoke about the importance of investing in tech-savvy leadership inside government and embracing new media in government. I called on the private sector to participate directly in public service. And specifically, I asked for entrepreneurs, innovators, people from companies to consider a rotational placement in government uh, at an agency like the FCC or elsewhere. Now I want to introduce someone who I was fortunate enough to meet as I was being nominated for my office. And the public is very fortunate that he agreed to take a rotation in public service at the FCC. Many of you already know him. Stephen Van Rokel joined us at the FCC last year after 15 years at Microsoft, where he was one of the pioneers of cross-industry web services. He was manager of the year. He was Bill Gates' strategy assistant. We made him managing director of the FCC, one of the senior and most uh, important positions at the agency. And in the last year, Steve has pioneered our reform agenda at the agency. He has, in a thousand ways, drove positive change throughout the agency. I've asked him to take on the mission around data, open government, and otherwise of institutionalizing change at the FCC step-by-step, step, taking our practices, opening them up, giving the public, third parties, access to our data in ways that institutionalize change at the FCC. Uh, I'm proud today that we're officially launching the beginning of our collaborative data initiative where we'll call on the community to engage in the FCC over data in new ways. Um, uh, it's a big initiative. Uh, Steve uh, and the team at the FCC have been working very uh, hard on this, and actually what I'm going to do is uh, ask Steve Van Rokel to come up here uh, and talk more about this. Uh, there are other people here at the FCC, uh, sorry, there are other people here from the FCC who've worked very hard with them. Uh, I won't mention each of them by name, um, uh, but I'm very grateful on behalf of the public, I thank them for their work in uh, uh, opening up uh, our processes, our data at the FCC, driving change at the FCC, and institutionalizing change at the FCC. Uh, now, let me please welcome Steve Van Rokel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I don't know if my slides are up yet, but I, I know all of you, I've got a lot of emails, tweets, blog posts, et cetera, really wanting to see the new FCC.gov and all the great work we've done there. So um, I'll uh, see if I can click forward here to the slide. I'm uh, ex-Microsoft, but very new to PowerPoint, as you can imagine. There you go. So there's the new website. Uh, you can see the uh, we've added a rotating uh, little graphic at the very top there. It's very innovative and, and new. And with that, I'll take questions. No, I'm kidding. Um, so. One of the things I found out coming to the FCC, coming to government from the private sector, is, is it's hard. There's a lot of uh, Web 1.0 mentality that create an incredible sprawl within our website. And, uh, um, and we were labeled the worst uh, website in government at one point by a, probably more than one person. Um, that, uh, that the, but when you look at government hiring, you look at processes, procedures, the rules that dictate certain language on certain web pages in certain places. Um, it's really tough, but I'm not here to make excuses. We, we, I came to Washington to help you know, bring about new impact, new innovation on this site. So um, we're working very diligently on the new website, and, uh, and hopefully the announcements I'm making today, you'll see some of the direction we're heading. And before the end of the year, you will see a new FCC.gov that, that greatly changes from the ground up um, how we approach web, um, the web platform, 
data, participation, and communication. So stay tuned on that. So as we think about FCC.gov reimagined, you know, one of the things that I, I hearken back to is really kind of thinking of .gov like a .com, you know, where we equate citizens as both our customer and shareholder. And every day we wake up thinking about um, customer satisfaction and shareholder value and market innovation, global competitiveness, and think about risk reward and how we're going to apply for the best uh, innovation across the board uh, as we think about agility and, and, uh, and, and uh, technology that we implement on the site. Um, so we're, we're uh, pushing you know, our, our level of responsiveness. We're thinking about uh, what platforms we're going to build upon to innovate um, and, uh, and how we can really kind of move in a new direction um, with, a, with a .gov website. The chairman men mentioned our principles of communication, participation, and data. Um, you know, in communication front, he talked a lot about how we, we connected uh, to our citizen base, where we are uh, building new connections, uh, where we want to really build a community across multiple audiences and, and pull all of that in. On participation, it's about engaging. You know, for too long on rulemaking, for example, um, we really had a process where only those who could afford lawyers or lawyers would show up at our commission and give input on the rules that we were creating every day. And, as he mentioned, we've opened up the doors for public participation for tens of thousands, and it's our intention on the new FCC.gov that we have every item that's in front of the commission can be put forward for public participation and comment that goes into the official record, um, and we'll pull that forward. Um, and then on data, it's about not only how do we disseminate data to you um, in the community, but also how do we collect it in better and smarter ways. Um, we've started on our initiative through the chief data officer reports to me um, mandating that our data collection is machine readable from the source so that, that instead of sending binders of paper to us that we actually get, uh, we actually get schematized XML um, coming in and we do that in smarter ways so we can actually uh, get better there. Um, how do we use data and how do we have build tools inside the commission to use that data is also another priority for us. Um, and then on the di dissemination point, um, this is where I have the most announcements to make today, so let's, let's get started. So our first announcement um, is something that we call FCC License View. Uh, this is a web services API and uh, mashup site that um, will give you access to licenses at the agency. Uh, this is the core asset of, of, this, uh, of this agency. We collect uh, and, and, uh, and regulate licenses for all the telecommunications technologies in the, in the, uh, in the industry, and uh, this will give you the first ever view into that data in a much deeper and richer way than, than the communities had before. Um, it's a small uh, but substantial snapshot. Um, we, uh, we give you access to download the bulk data or access this data via, via API, but we, we know going forward that you know, data cleanup and data integrity are all important things. We're going to continue to work on that, so this is really the tip of the iceberg on, on where we're going with a broader effort to really open up licensing across the agency. Another point is around um, uh, Another technology and platform uh, uh, API we've done is around FCC registration number. This seems very trivial, but for all the license information we have locked up inside the agency, we have uh, the, all the licenses are tied to a registration number. So you may see multiple entities whole owning spectrum in different parts of the country that actually all accrue up to, say, a Verizon or an AT&T or someone like that. Um, this, this API will give you access to actually pull in those different entities and get one singular view to be able to query against those. So um, this you know, really unlocks, uh, unlocks um, uh, a new level of, of transparency on our license data, which is great. The FCC Consumer Broadband Test API, this spring in conjunction with the National Broadband Plan that we published, uh, we also built a few apps, um, a broadband speed test that runs on mobile platforms and one online that will test your both wired and wireless broadband speeds. Um, it was a pretty exciting to see the numbers start rolling in, and we've surpassed a million tests run on this test. And for the first time in an announcement today, we're opening up this data to you. So you 
citizens, you, the industry, to use to, uh, to look at this real raw data. Um, this is presented in an API, Web Services API, like the others, um, where you can send, a, uh, you can send in a, a, a GPS coordinate and we'll return the upload, download speeds, latency, all of that for the location that you, uh, you've done by, by county. And so we've, we've broken it down to county level to protect PII, but you can get some really interesting data for that. Another uh, web service we're building is, is really a, a, a key indicator on where we're heading with FCC.gov all up, and that is um, the census block search API. You know, uh, most major federal data sets are actually built on census data, but nowhere in government was access to triangulate a physical location with census data. Um, when we encountered that problem, instead of going in and just writing proprietary code, we said, let's build a service here that not only we can use to build our platform upon, but we can actually give out to, uh, to the community as well. Um, so this is the first tool of its kind where now at the FCC website you can go and, and through this API you can query, give us, give us a GPS coordinate, we'll send you back a census block, or you can send us a census block and we'll send you back the geographic descriptor of, of where this, uh, this stuff is. And so pretty exciting to kind of reach across government and all the data that's locked up in census format to, uh, to pull that in. Now, hopefully the question all of you are asking is, is where do I get this stuff? Where do I get these APIs? And the, the last announcement we're making today is the launch of FCC.gov slash developer. Um, slash developer is our community site where we hope uh, people will come and, and, uh, and give us feedback and and, uh, and participate in, in this development community. Um, we also uh, is the place where you can get code snippets, schema, all the, all the web services API calls to access all the data I referenced today and all the data we're gonna do in the future. There is a lot more to come. It's live right now if you, uh, if you head there. So as we think about reimagining the FCC, the call to action for all of you, of course, is, is you know, get involved in slash developer, let your developer friends know this stuff is up there, that we're starting to do it, that we're gonna make it available. Um, stay, uh, stay tuned on the redesign all up. We're kicking off a bunch of, uh, a bunch of workshops and, um, and other things with the public uh, in different, different uh, categories of public to actually help us uh, get, uh, get this redesign to the next level and, uh, and connect with us. The key thing here is, is I want you to, and there's my, my Twitter handle and my, uh, my email address, um, you know, push us, collaborate with us, jolt us out of, out of the, the government, you know, Web 1.0 norm, and, and really help us advance this, uh, advance this ball forward. So with that, I thank you all. Thanks a lot, Steve. Thank you, Tim.